So at long last, we've, we've finally now reached the last stage of, of the MailChimp for Salesforce uh, app impl implementation. Uh, you are again presented with this setup screen, and rather than saying, don't show it again, my coaching is skip it, because you can always uh, come back to it, and after a month or, or two, you, you may forget some of this, so it's worth looking at. Uh, so th this is the screen, and again, the, those little helps actually show you pretty well how best to manage these. Um, but if what we have is, if we're trying to synchronize, we have a couple of settings that we can look at. We can either keep all activity, all campaign, everything related to it, or, or we can not sync anything. Uh, we can sync subscriber information only, not, not the activity records, but just the subscriber information. Um, let's just say at this point we're going to set it for one month. Uh, and, and just as an aside, a good way to be able to track on this, and I encourage you to do this because uh, space is important. If you go out to company information in company settings, uh, and this is reverting to the, the classic, uh, but it looks the same really if you're, uh, if, if you're looking at it within Lightning as well. So there's um, a used uh, data and used file. If you click on view, you get uh, more detail. And that detail is actually pretty helpful because what it shows you is uh, same information repeated from the first screen. And then it shows you a breakdown uh, by object or kind of you know what record types are being kept, the number of records, the amount of storage they're requiring, and then a percentage to give you a sense of, of which objects are bigger. And obviously, there's a strong correlation between all of this. but. Uh, it's a great way to be able to stay in touch with your organization to know how fast it's growing because you want to make sure that you uh, uh, don't let it get too big. Now, uh, kind of one option, and you're seeing it here, is this big object storage is, is, seems pretty big. Um, there is additional information, and there's an option here around use cases which says that data archiving, if you have a large amount of data, uh, you can use big objects to store it. Uh, take a look at the at the um, at the trailhead on it. Um, it I think it's it's very helpful. There there are some query issues or exactly how you access it. So it's it's not a, a, a standard way to to gather information, but it's a, a good way to do some backups to understand uh, what you might want to consider. Um, so so if what we're doing though is we say we want to keep this activity for. Uh, for a month, and we now want to turn on synchronization, as this blue box is suggesting we do, by going to Settings and clicking Data Sync. It says some of your MailChimp fields haven't been mapped. So we say, OK. What that means is for this list that we're looking at, we need to go out and make sure that we've mapped all the fields. And if we're looking here, we say, oops, you know what? It looks like we don't have birthday. Uh, what this is looking for is birth date. So we say, all right, MailChimp set, set the update there. Uh, we're then going to go back um, to, to MailChimp. And what we're going to do is to go to Settings. And now we're going to turn it on. And it's going to say, great, your sync has been turned on. You're in good shape there. Now, a, a way that we can, can look at, uh, at that is to, uh, is to go out here. Since this can take some significant amount of time, it's worth looking at the uh, at the jobs queue to know exactly what we have going on, and we can look both at our our scheduled jobs, which shows kind of all of the queues that are out there that we want to look at, and we also can look at our uh, Apex jobs to understand kind of what's been run and what's in status. So it's an easy way, again, to come out here and look at the Apex jobs to see uh, kind of what's been run or what's queued or, or what, what, what percent of, of completion um, is with each of these. So know that that's through the job setting and the environmental function. Um, with that, uh, what we're going to do is now focus on building some lists and showing how to test that out. Uh, but thanks for watching.